Okay, I think we're back. OBS just decided to quit on me. My internet was fine. OBS was not playing friendly on that one. But uh, now that we're back, hopefully everybody comes back on here. Um, I'll give you guys a couple minutes to get back on, and then we're going to start unboxing. But unboxing the new Pocket 4K, what I was saying was basically sold the GH5 uh, to to buy the new... Uh, what's up, AJ? Or AJ? I, I, I'm sorry if I missed out your name. I, I, I talk to you all the time in the comments, but I, I apologize if I missed out your name there. Um, but uh, the uh, Pocket 4K sold the GH5. Uh, Mark, I'm back. OBS is definitely on my ish list. It's it's I'm trying to keep a PG here, but yeah, on my ish list. Between my internet and OBS, it is fun times. Um, anyways, sold the GH5, bought bought a new Pocket 4K to basically use as my B cam. Uh, I'm actually picked up a second uh, HDMI capture card. So for future unboxings, I should maybe have a top down view. Unfortunately, one thing that helps with that top-down view is having a second camera, which is in this box. So I can't really do that here. Um, but updated the the GH5, uh, I, I, and I said this last night. I didn't really update. I just changed cameras. So the GH5 is an amazing camera. No like ill will towards that camera in the slightest. Um, but uh, I use a Pocket 4K as my A cam. It just made more sense to. Uh, to, to buy another Pocket 4K for a B cam. Color science, that was probably the biggest thing. Color science, low light, uh, and things like that. So, as you can see, still pack, still uh, got the, uh, the plastic wrap on here. So, I'm gonna go ahead and start unboxing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically open some things up and kinda show you as I get in here uh, with it. So, I will say, for as cool as a camera, the Pocket 4K is. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the packaging. I feel like it's kind of like at least the, like the the uh, design of the packaging. I feel like it's kind of underwhelming. Uh, but that's this is the box. So it has a couple of images of the Pocket 4K. Has the, the T5 uh, CFast card, SD card. Um, I actually wanted to point that out. So my goal for this is if you guys have watched any of my rig videos, you know I have my A cam pocket camera completely rigged out, SSD, battery, everything, at least for like the first month. Uh, I want to try to see what I can get away with rolling minimalist on the B pocket cam. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to get a cage right away. I don't know if I'm going to start rigging it up right away. It'll probably take me a couple weeks before I'm like, Okay, I really want to rig this out, especially as I see like the Tilta uh, all black cage, which I have the like the the gray cage right now. Um, let me see if this SD. Yeah, I just pulled that out without even ejecting it. My SD cards hate me, uh, but this is the SD card that I'm using for whenever I'm um, using twelve to one compression. Uh, I'm not necessarily doing a paid gig unless it's just like a um, uh, like a backup storage or something like that. But this is a Extreme Pro. Uh, I don't think, even think it's a max. 170 megabytes uh, speed is a V30. Uh, so if you see people out there saying you can't use SD cards with Pocket 4K, it's probably not the most reliable thing, but you can do it. Um, I can probably get about, it's 128 gigabyte storage. I can probably get about a solid like 30 to 40 minutes of 60 frames at 4K. Um, and then probably like 90 minutes to an hour, maybe even an hour and 20 minutes, 4K, 24 frames per second. So this is what I'm going to put on the B cam for a while, especially if I'm trying to make it light for things like overhead view and stuff like that. So. Back to that. So I wanted to point that out with the SD card there. It's not like a, a marketing thing where they're saying you can't or you can use SD cards and you really can't. You you really can. So you have you have that. You have a couple of pictures on here. Just some marketing or just like uh, different perks and things like that. 
uh, a little bit more information about the Pocket 4K over on the side. Let me see if I can get that in the frame. Let me scoot the mic over a little bit. So a couple of things there. Uh, let's open it up, see what we got. I mean, I know what we got. It's a Pocket 4K. All right. All right, so first things first. At which compression ratio does the V30 tap because it can't keep up with? I I said this last night in the stream. Um, Mark was asking at which compression ratio does the V30 tap out because it can't keep up with uh, RAW. Um, oh, and I didn't mention. Yeah, it was Blackmagic RAW that I'm I'm doing that uh, SD card in. Uh, I haven't gone above twelve to one for anything yet. But some reviews that I saw was as soon as you get past like uh, twelve to one. I think I can't remember what's right above that, but. When you start getting slightly less compression, that's when it starts tapping out. Really, you should only use the SD if you're doing 12 to 1 compression. That's when it's probably the most uh, efficient file size and, and, and write speeds. Also, make sure there is a setting that you can do uh, where basically it stops recording if it starts skipping frames. Um, yeah, I think it is 8 to 1. I, I, yeah, I think it is 8. I think it goes 12 to 1, 8 to 1. So I think when you're around 8 to 1, I think at that point, it may start lagging a little bit. You may start having some drop frames, and so it'll stop recording. Uh, if you have that setting turned on, which, like I said, I strongly encourage. Uh, but then I've, I've seen some people say 5 to 1. I don't really believe that. Uh, I think 12 to 1 is probably the safest bet. So if you're doing, like, online, um, uh, you know, uploading online and, and just doing online uh, content, just do 12 to 1 compression. You should be fine. Uh, V90 cards are around two times the raw. You may be able to get away with a slightly better ratio if needed. Yeah. I've talked about SD cards before with Pocket 4K users, and they were talking about V90 cards. Um, and obviously, if you go V90, you probably are going to have a little bit better ratio options. Um, but at that point, I don't know how much V90 cards are, but get a T5. Get a T5. Uh, honestly, like if you're. The only reason why I would even mention to do an SD card is for like run and gun scenarios where it's not like where you're just doing like short burst. Like if I'm going like we're going on a family outing today and I'm probably going to bring this camera with the SD card and just one battery and that's OK for that type of scenario. Um, but if you are doing any anything remotely like professional, just get a T5, get a T5 and be done with it. Uh, yeah. V90 cards are almost as expensive as C, uh, C, CF Express cards. So I, I want to get a, a CFast card um, for the Pocket 4K, but the problem is they're so dang expensive. Uh, I've wanted to do some like off-brand ones when they get better reviews and better uh, reputation. Uh, there are some out there that kind of catch my eye, uh, which is great because it will cut down on the size of the Pocket 4K. But for now, the T5 works, and I can do pretty much all uh ratios so opening the box i got my lpe6 this is gonna last you about 30 40 minutes depending on the what you're recording uh, but i've i've gotten a solid like 30 to 40 minutes out of these um, i may pick up more of these especially if i'm not trying to rig up the uh the um i don't know why i'm blinking the pocket i'm not trying to rig up the pocket that's what i was trying to say uh, if you're looking for budget LPE6 batteries, or for that matter, NPF batteries. One brand that I use and use because of DSLR video shooter is, I think it's DTSE, uh, is a brand that I use, and I've had really good success with their batteries. Um, I actually bought some LPE6 batteries from them and returned them because I didn't think I'd use them. Probably end up buying them again. But they're pretty inexpensive and pretty reliable. So LPE6, what else we got in here? I'm gonna be so ready for when we actually have like a top-down view. Oh, I've got a black magic sticker. I don't think I got this with the first one. This is gonna go on the gear uh, drawer. Nope. I have a tool chest that I bought for all my gear. Uh, this is gonna go on that. I want to kind of like punk rock it out and put all these stickers and everything on it. A uh, little bit of a pamphlet about the Pocket 4K and Black Magic in general. So dope. Uh, I think actually this is, this might be the DaVinci instructions. 
yeah, this is the, I think that's the Da Vinci instructions. Speaking of which, one reason why I generally promote getting a new pocket is, especially right now, you're not going to find a ton of discounts on the pockets buying used. Um, I think the best I saw was eleven, twelve hundred dollars $1,200 used. And if you, what I did, it's dumb, but what I did is I actually went through B&H and used their like credit card thing that like if you get approved, you save on tax. And so I was like, I don't normally do this. This is the one time I'm going to do it because it saved me like a hundred bucks. Um, but I think with that, I spent as much as I would have buying a used copy of it. And if you buy a used copy of DaVinci Resolve, unless they're going to give you Resolve with it, the downside of it is you're not getting Resolve. And, and so that's, that's a, I mean, Resolve, I think is $300. I mean, that's a $300 savings right there when you're buying a new pocket camera. So it really, I think the used versus new co kind of cost ratio right now still makes sense to buy a new pocket camera because you do get Resolve. So even though I may end up selling this Resolve because obviously I already have Resolve, uh, but there is your Resolve. You have an activation card. I think that has a code in it. Yeah, I'm not gonna show my code. Somebody's gonna use that. Um, I might do that give. Oh, let me give away. No, I need to make money off of it. Um, so uh, there's the uh, SD card that you're gonna put in to install Resolve. So you got some Resolve information. Got your power cable. Uh, I use this for like two days and then I stop using it because I just charge my batteries. At that point, I think it has a, yeah. So when you get it, and it might be different for like different countries and different areas, but you get like universal plugs as well. Uh, so that's nice. Um, I do actually use my power cable when I'm doing my like uh, talking head reviews and talking head videos. I just plug it into the mains instead of going off battery power. So that is some stuff that's on top. So right now that is all the the stuff that's on the top of the box. So now we get down. Let me just put that down for a second. I, I've owned this camera for like six months and just opening this package. Let's see if I can get this in here. Let me cut to my camera so I can see so I don't have that lag. There we go. This makes me nervous a little bit. I need the top-down camera. Oh my goodness. Look at that beaut. Look at that beauty. So you got the pocket 4K. I'm surprised it doesn't come in like a like a wrap or something. I didn't I don't remember it not coming in a wrap last time or like some type of like plastic wrap or cloth wrap to kind of protect it. That's odd, but mm, mm. Oh, this feels so good. Feels so good. I forgot what it feels like not having a rig on it, because uh, I think the day I got the camera, I rigged it up. Uh, so I've got the the display wrap here. Let me take that off. I'm going to put in my LPE six battery. This is one thing I hate about the pocket cameras is the battery door doesn't spring open. You have to like, there we go. There we go. Nope. Yeah, that, there we go, there's the click. Marcos, what's up man, how are you? Happy Saturday, happy Saturday. Oh man, I this one actually may go without a rig because this actually feels really good. It scares me because it's a more of a plastic body. It's a hard plastic. It it doesn't feel the pocket doesn't feel cheap, but it's it's just that like brushed plastic kind of like casing that makes me nervous. Uh, and so let's turn it on. Let's see what we got. Oh. <gasps> English. All right, let me go through a couple of setup screens here. What do we got next? 
I, it's been forever since I've set this up. So we've got blank screen. Oh my God, my pocket's dead. No, but really. What's happening here? We're going to wait for that to come up. Maybe the battery is dead. I might have to plug it in. Um, but this uh, is the pocket. Mark says, doing some extensive R6 testing while uh, I work and watch. 20 minutes into 4K60 recording externally. Got that nasty overheating warning about three minutes ago. So like 20, 15 minutes of recording. Oh, okay. So I'm a dumb dumb. It was blink because I it was supposed to have a lens on it. So I do have a menu. Uh, I may do a video on my Pocket 4K settings, uh, so if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Um, I always feel weird doing like cinematic settings for my camera. Uh, so lasted 21 minutes, 36 seconds on 4K 60. I mean, I don't know if I've ever recorded the Pocket 4K on 4, uh, like 4K 60. I feel like I'd run out of space before it actually died. But... Man, this feels really good. Seriously, I'm going to keep this one not. Uh, I'm definitely keeping this one uh, not rigged up. Being able to like run and gun, also have it as a as a overhead cam, B cam for you know like product B roll. Uh, one of the things that made me uh, go with a pocket camera is if I've done. If you've seen on the channel, I've done a few like pocket uh, rigs. Um, where I'm having to actually, uh, you know, like film the pocket, like I'm holding it and I was having to do it with the GH5 and I just, I wasn't really have a ton of fun with GH5 anymore. And I think the GH5 for me was in certain scenarios, but for the most part, I, I just wasn't having fun creating with it anymore. Um, and so having this being able you're, so you're probably gonna have more rig videos to be honest, um, because I can film my rig with my pocket 4k uh, and so i think one that i'm going to do here soon is my um pocket 4k shoulder rig and an update on my handheld rig because i've changed it pretty drastically from my uh from my last video so <laughs> 24 hour mark is testing his uh canon r6 to see about overheating he's got 21 minutes and 36 seconds at 4k 60 um, and now he's trying a 4k 24, but <laughs> I don't know if that was a joke. I think it was a joke that he's gonna have to wait a few hours for the 4k for the R6 to cool down. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> crazy. Uh, so let me do this. Let me go ahead. Uh, battery door over here on the right. I will say like, I know the SD card is not the main storage, but I mean, this has pretty redundant storage. It has a CFast card. It has... So it has a CFast card slot. Nope, over here. It has the SD card slot. And then, of course, it can record uh, externally to USB-C uh, through USB-C, obviously. So what do I do with the SD card? I don't know. I legitimately don't know. Oh, there it is. Partial joke. <laughs> Give it a cool it artificially. Are you going to just change the setting or... Tr try to trick it somehow to say that's cooled down. Uh, so Mark asked, um, how do I feel about the T5? He keeps hearing reports that the USB-C is coming loose. Uh, yes. Uh, that is one reason I eventually would do want to get into CFast cards for paid gigs um, is simply because I have had times where the uh, T5 is not being recognized, um, and it is, I, I think I did it a few months ago where it was by process of elimination, the cable that was coming with it, uh, or not, no, no, not the cable that came with it, but the Tilta cable. So I have a Tilta cage, and I bought the Tilta cable because it's you know, nicely threaded, uh, it has a right angle to go into the, obviously, the USB-C slot, um, but again through process of, process of elimination I figured out that the cable was the issue of the communication so I went back to the cable that the T5 was provided with and it seemed to be working fine I've only had that error once maybe twice 
since I've gone back to the native cable. Um, and honestly, like that's fine. But I will say when I'm going on a paid shoot, I will bring, I, I if it's an actual paid shoot, I, I'm probably going to pull the trigger and do a CFast card. So uh, you should check out Crucial X8. They're very, very, very snug USB-C connection. Uh, houses in NVM internally. Do you, Crucial X8, I'm assuming, is a brand of USB-C cables? Uh, and if it is, send me a link if you have a link. Or if you don't have a link, I'll hit you up later in messages. Um, Mark and I talk pretty frequently. We're in a, a, a text group, a Slack group of YouTube people uh, and creators. Yeah. Oh, brand of USB-C external drives. Okay. Okay, that has me interested. Now, the only thing that the T5 has going, well, not the only thing, but the thing that T5 has going for it is it's cheap. So I've actually gotten to where, like, I'll actually fix a T5 in the budget if I'm doing a paid shoot because basically, like, the customer is going to have their own T5 at that point, which is really helpful because if they want that raw footage, I basically bought that T5. Here you go. So, uh, and, and it's cheap, so I can just add on, like, an extra $100 onto the shoot uh, to, to account for that. So, but yes, I, I do, uh, want to one terabyte for a hundred. What? So Mark has uncovered the gold mine of USB C, uh, SD, uh, SSDs, one terabyte X eight for $149 on Amazon currently. Yes, please. I'm going to check that out. Um, let me see if there's anything else in the box. I don't think there's anything else in the box. I don't remember anything else being in the box. But we'll see. No, definitely not. And this thing's not coming out. Okay. So that's the, the Pocket 4K unboxing. Um, my video for this week's pretty much done. So I was like, this is a perfect time to do an unboxing for this. Uh, so... My daughter just fell down or something. I had to go check on her. Um, but, uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot more content. Uh, I'm going to try to make some content of like, hey, this is what you need to get started on Pocket 4K. And I think I may take you guys along the journey of, you know, uh, getting as minimalist as you can with the Pocket 4K. Uh, I was asked on uh, one of my other videos today, hey, you know, can I shoot with an SD card and LPE6 battery? Uh, can I shoot with it right out of the box? Yes, you can. Now, there may be some limitations. You may have to do 12 to 1 compression. You may have to bring a lot of LP6 batteries, uh, but uh, you, you absolutely can. You absolutely can. Um, is it is the SD card advised? Uh, if you look at Blackmagic's website, I don't think that they would actually advise for certain compressions and certain frame rates to use an SD card, um, but... It, it does do the job. And one thing I like about this is this is going to be more gimbal friendly. Um, even though the Crane 2S does handle my rig, this is going to make just life a little bit lighter. <laughs> and so, because, I mean, the whole thing becomes, yeah, I can support a rig on the Crane 2S, but ultimately I still have to carry that around. <laughs> and so having something like this, on the Crane 2S is just going to make life so much easier. And a part of that is having the SD, having the LPE6, not having to have a bunch of external things uh, will help make that. Again, I may still at least grab like a tilt a cage just because of the plastic finish on the body. Uh, I don't want anything cracking or getting damaged. Um, and so I may still grab just a cage for it, but I'm probably going to try fighting uh, rigging it out as much as possible. Man, it's dirty. And that that's kind of disappointing. I, I wish they had... I feel like my original pocket had uh, the fabric kind of cloth to cover it as it shipped. Uh, but now it's got like all the styrofoam like shavings on it. Dumb. Dumb. Mark says, I found two of them and use it for offloading footage during cut, edit, grade, then migrate to my server after delivery. Have you tried, I don't know if you have a camera that shoots to SD. Have you tried, uh, or not SD, but the SSDs. Have you tried shooting with it? That's the only question. 
because obviously your transfer rates have to be a certain. I, I think it should be fine. I don't know. At this point, I'm just rambling. Okay. Um, I am going to do some editing, and I've got to record uh, some small re- smaller reviews for some companies. So I'm going to bounce out of here. Um, but hopefully you guys got something out of that as far as uh, unboxing the Pocket 4K. Uh, again, this was like I'm probably less like, oh, <gasps> because this is my second Pocket 4K. But hopefully, hopefully that gave you some idea of what it looks like to get your own Pocket 4K and get you excited. Um, I think I'm going to make an update video about if I recommend the Pocket 4K to people because when I made, when I made my original like one month review, uh, I, I remember saying, you know, I don't recommend this to everyone. But honestly, if you can make it work, I recommend it to anyone because image, 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 just an amazing image that comes out of this camera. So that being said, Mark, uh, thanks for joining. Marcos, thanks for joining. Uh, Jay, thanks for joining. Uh, obviously, thank you all for joining. If you haven't been in the chat, um, thank you guys for chatting. You guys have a great Saturday. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Stay safe. Be happy. Wash those hands. See, this is what happens when I'm doing my normal videos. If I mess up, and this is what I'm redoing all the time. So wash those hands. And I'll see you guys here next time. Peace.